This is Lecture 29, Induced Innovation and Endogenous Technological Change. A big question. If everyone in China had a car, if everyone in the developing world had a car and drove it 15,000 miles a year, would we run out of oil? Uh, if there's 7 billion people on the planet, each of them driving 15,000 miles, you might think we would run out of oil, but most economists would say no, because there's a market for oil, there's a price for oil, and when you have a price for a scarce good, price is a signal of scarcity, and if demand is rising and there's finite supply from basic supply and demand, price is going to go up, and that's going to send a signal. The optimistic claim economists make is that uh, rational, self-interested people and firms respond to price signals. On the demand side of the market, if the price of gasoline jumped from $3 a gallon to $50 a gallon, you'd see all sorts of consumer substitution, and that this on the demand side would uh, lead to re such that we don't run out of oil. And on the supply side, if there's the anticipation that the price of, of oil is going to continue to be that high, you're going to see all sorts of innovation, induced innovation. Uh, think of Tesla, the rise of electric vehicles and substitutes for oil-fired uh, transportation. Think of the Toyota Prius, that it's this high gasoline price that would create a strong profit motive to come up with substitutes that economize on this increasingly expensive resource. So from basic supply and demand, uh, given that the demand for gasoline has soared over the last hundred years, I want to show you a slide on the inflation-adjusted price of gasoline over the last hundred years. Let's take a look at this. Time goes from 1919 to the year 2011. The price measured in 2012 US dollars is measured on the vertical axis, and you basically see a flat line. In 1919, uh, perhaps before the Model T, uh, before cars really took off in the US or anywhere else, price of gasoline was $3.35, and today it's roughly the same. Uh, so basically, despite b a billion cars on the road and uh, perhaps trillions of gas gallons of gasoline pulled out of the ground, price hasn't gone up. And of course, this is uh, because of supply effects of a innovation in engineering and in looking for, ga for oil and turning that into gasoline. And so this price signal suggests that gasoline has not become more scarce over time, and that might surprise uh, peak oil proponents. My colleague uh, Jared Diamond of UCLA wrote a bestseller called Collapse, where he worries that an unintended consequence of the world achieving the American dream is that we could devour unintentionally key natural resources. Uh, so here he says he's, yes, world population's growing, but perhaps more important for global consumption patterns is the third world achieving the American dream. And uh, he implicitly is saying that it, it's a bad thing in terms of sustainability for these folks to all become rich. Intuitively, for the people of China and India to all be able to live the American dream of the enormous impact that would have on our environment. A couple of years ago, I wrote a comment about this, uh, focused on uh, Diamond's uh, ignoring the potential for induced innovation to play a role in protecting us. And I wrote, expectations of future scarcity create incentives to innovate now. Implicit in Diamond's work is a type of mass behavioral economics myopia, where he and a few other wise men are the only ones aware of the coming days of scarcity. I am more democratic and optimistic that if there is a future arbitrage opportunity, that a few ambitious young capitalists will seek out the profit opportunities and be ready with the next Toyota Prius that will help to mitigate the future scarcity challenge. Intuitively, that anticipated challenges create opportunities for entrepreneurs. And I talked about this on my blog repeatedly. So a fact that empiricists have documented, both in the case of air conditioners and in the case of uh, vehicles, is when the, the operating cost, uh, whether it's of an air conditioner with electricity prices or with a car with gas prices, when these operating costs go up, either because of rising electricity prices or rising gas prices, that you see manufacturers quickly come out with more energy efficient models and this is induced innovation. Just think of the rise of the Toyota Prius. If the price of gasoline was zero, would Toyota bother 
to create such a fuel-efficient vehicle, and would anyone besides her people in Berkeley buy it? So here I do some simple algebra of operating costs. You own a vehicle that achieves 10 miles per gallon. You drive it 15,000 miles per year. If the price of gasoline is $2 per gallon, you're going to purchase 1,500 gallons of gas and pay $3,000 in operating costs. If somehow the price of gasoline goes up from $2 per gallon to $5 per gallon, your operating costs of this fuel inefficient vehicle goes up to $7,500 per year. That's pretty serious. Suppose that an entrepreneur figures out how to make a car that achieves 100 miles per gallon. If you continue to drive that 15,000 miles per year, and if the price of gasoline remains at $5 per year, $5 per gallon, excuse me, you can do the algebra and your operating cost is only $750, which is much less than that operating cost of $7,500. The car manufacturer who creates this car would be able to charge a higher price for this car, reflecting the present discounted value of the saved operating costs, uh, this savings of roughly $7,000 a year. This is a durable good. Present discounted value of that could be charged as the price premium, incentivizing the entrepreneur to do this work. So in this sense, higher gas prices induce innovation. So the key point I want you to take away here, and this is my last slide, is that economists believe that good ideas, uh, solar panels, Priuses, can substitute for natural capital. And if it's the case that we have a market, and if rising demand, as Jared Diamond has pointed out, if this leads to higher prices, then this gives entrepreneurs as an incentive, as we just saw with the operating cost example, an incentive to innovate. And the incentives to innovate are crucial. In a world with 7 billion people, many of whom seeking solutions, whether to climate change adaptation, or in this case, uh, to resource conservation, Induced innovation goes a long way to helping us to cope. And ideas are public goods. Many of us take advantage of Facebook. We only needed one Mark Zuckerberg to give us Facebook. And so in a world of 7 billion people, what's the probability if many entrepreneurs are looking for solutions that all of them fail?